Welcome to the 19th season of The Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Nittany Lions and the only show of its kind in the state. Our Nitwits panel features Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com. Between them, they've covered Penn State for 70 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ Sports Director Alex Colley. And each week, we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona, just ask rental, buy what you want, rent what you need. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selene Orthodontics, Dr. Reed and Selene provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor specializing in distributing a full line of food service products to restaurants, schools, and institutions throughout central Pennsylvania. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Thank you for joining us on the Nitwits. We have Neil Riddell, the Altoona Mirror, and Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com. I'm your host, Alex Colley, and we'd like to welcome back to the show someone who's experienced his fair share of big Penn State wins. Keith Collin, thanks so much for joining us. Again. Good to be back here, boys. Good to be back. Good to see you, Keith. Well, like the Penn State offense, we're going to start fast. Penn State <laughs> trounced the Terps 38-14. And what were some of your biggest impressions from the homecoming win? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw a Penn State team just completely outcoach another team. And I don't mean that disrespectfully toward this staff, but, I mean, the way they kind of just undid DJ Durkin and that new staff at, uh, at Maryland, I was so impressed. Offensively, uh, they basically went at Maryland, just pounded it, pounded it, pounded it. Defensively, even with all of the injuries, the job they did outside of some poor tackling, you know, maybe some dicey things on special teams, but I thought this was the best coach game I've seen out of a James Franklin staff. Yeah, and just to build on that, I don't think there's any doubt that we've seen a well-coached program since James Franklin right. has taken over. But I think it's starting to translate now to on the field, game management, timely blitzes, uh, imposing their will. That's something they've really wanted to do. He's wanted to play with a running quarterback, and uh, it really showed up uh, uh, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I'm watching the first quarter. I had a tear in my eye, you know, watching you know, <laughs> the, the ground game take over the game. And uh, it, was, it was good to see, finally. And they, they, they went out there with a the mission, and they, and they accomplished it by, you know, they, they ran the ball great yesterday, and it was a all, great all-around game. And it goes to show you, Goon, I mean, mm -hmm. when you have a running quarterback, I mean, to me, that's what's made it. The last game and a half, the mm -hmm. fact that McSorley's been, I know we'll touch on him a little later in the show, but having, he's keeping the, 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 the defense honest, and that made things not only good for McSorley, but also, I mean, Saquon Barkley, yeah. and as an O-lineman, let us know what that's like when you have two guys, two weapons like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not going to say it's good to miss blocks and this and that, but you have a mobile quarterback who can run around like Trace can, you know, you're not expected to do, you know, all of the work. And, you know, if you have a guy back there, like, you know, Christian was a, was a guy back there who was a statue. And if you miss your block, he's going to get hit. Or Trace gives you that added, uh, you know, run threat. And it's really helping out Saquon big time with, it, with, it, with the run game. One of the adjustments uh, made, it was talked about during the week, is getting started quicker. Uh, it's really been uh, sort of a black mark for about a year and a half. And... Uh, you know, they implemented some things in practice to try to uh, 
inject some urgency right away. And I think that was a big factor. Had it not been for sort of a, an iffy pass interference call, they could have been on their way into going up 14 nothing. But uh, they were able to be resilient and bounce back from even the fumble down in the red zone by Barkley. I thought they shook out some of their disappointments better. I also thought they played with a little more tempo early in the game. And the other thing is, that, you know, listen, we have to remember that Sure, you know, Moorhead was known as this great offensive coordinator, but you don't learn a new offense over the course of one or two games or a preseason or a spring practice. And I think that's what we're seeing now. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the fact that these guys had five games under their belts and they're starting to get the hang of it. You know, that's offensive line, that's the that's a quarterback, running backs, that's everybody. You know, they we, a few weeks ago, they were simply having trouble getting a, a great handoff from McSorley to Barkley. And so those are the things you have to work through. People were attacking that mesh point. Now they've, they've got it figured out, and it's becoming that much more fun to watch and that much more effective. Well, they ran 81 plays. I think that's one of the other things, sticking with the run and be able to keep Maryland and dominate uh, time, time of, of possession. possession. That's the kind of offense that Moorhead wants to run. From a defensive side of the ball, this is a Maryland team that put up 50-plus on a Big Ten opponent. All the injuries piling up there how impressed were you with the defensive side of the ball oh i mean you you have again outside of the tackles i mean we give out grades and i had to give a b only because i think you have to take away when you miss that many tackles but having said that wow you know these guys are are hitting hard they're playing hard they're not using injuries as an excuse that defensive front to me you know had a couple cracks but the, you know the, uh sean chaos spencer is rotating 10 guys in there Guys are stepping up at linebackers. The defensive backs are hitting like you would not believe. I was super impressed, and I think, you know, tip of a hat to, to Brett Pry and, and what he's done there, given all the injuries. And they stepped up when they had to. You know, if they needed the big stop, they needed the big play, they come up with it. And that's, you know, that helps out the whole team confidence-wise. Uh, you know, Mark said about, you know, four or five games in right now. Football is all about confidence. You got to have confidence in, you know, even with the, the trace and stuff like that. He's confident in the game plan right now. He's confident in his abilities, and it's making a big difference. These linebackers, you know, they, you know, they were getting beat up a little bit for the, the past three or four games, but you can see them out there. They're making plays. D line, ten guys rotating, and it's amazing what they're doing. Uh, everybody's confident in what they're doing. They're going out there, and Mark's right with the defensive backs. I mean, they're drilling people. I mean, they're playing really good right now. They're hitting like our linebackers right now, yeah. which is scary, but. Hey, yeah. they're getting it done. Yeah, Allen's been the leading tackler in the Big Ten, one of the best player, defensive players in the Big Ten. Uh, I thought one of the key plays in the whole game was when um, Penn State was down there, uh, uh, Maryland was down there uh, after a turnover, after the block punt, and they sent Farmer on a blitz on first down, and he created a turnover right there, got the ball back, and it allowed. You almost never see somebody go for 50 yards on a touchdown run that close to the end of the first half. I mean, Maryland really collapsed at certain points in the game, but that was a great defensive play. Well, I also thought, you know, one of the key plays was up 24 to, was it, yeah, 24 to 14. And uh, Maryland busts a long run, and it looks like the guy's gone. And uh, Malik Golden tracks him down and tackles him. Yeah, you know, listen, you, that would have been a three-point game yeah. at that point. Instead, with the ball. they end up holding. Marcus Allen stops them on fourth down. Penn State gets the ball back. So you think about the effort that that kid made. It would have been so easy to just let that guy bolt. But you know what? You have a fifth-year senior, guy who was recruited by Joe. You know, th this is your, you, you only have a few leaders. But when you see one of these kids step up and make that kind of play, you think that didn't resonate throughout the entire team. And all of a sudden, right after that, it was a completely different game. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. But when the Nitwits return, we're going to focus more on Trace McSorley's play yesterday and so far this season. We'll be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm, and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona, just ask rental, buy what you want, rent what you need. We now return to the Nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. 
Welcome back. We've seen it a lot lately, but the offense opens up and is most successful when Penn State quarterback Trace McSorley is able to find a way to extend the play or step up in the pocket. We've got uh, plenty of touchdowns, almost 1,400 yards th through the air, 200 on the ground. How much is he getting the credit he deserves? How impressed are you? Well, yeah, I mean, I think he is. He is getting the credit he deserves. Listen, again, you know, I go back to what I said a little earlier. It took him about four and a half games, but we started to see it toward the end of the uh, the, the Minnesota game, where you know he ought, has a, a run for a touchdown, and then he has that big 26-yard run, uh, you know, late in the game to help set up the field goal. When he is running the ball effectively, that keeps the defense honest. So I don't think it was any surprise or, or coincidence at the end of the Minnesota game that Barkley was struggling all game. Well, all of a sudden, he st McSorley starts running well, and now Barkley pops the 25-yard game winner. I think one guy doing well is helping the other guy. You know, I think it was interesting because the last couple of years, I think James Franklin was sort of being blamed for Christian Hackenberg and the fact that uh, you know he wasn't managing Hackenberg better and a disconnect in the relationship and whatnot but I think now he, he's being proven right in what he wanted to do and how it's being done and this is still a small sample size of McSorley but the way he's converting third downs I heard on the pregame show yesterday he was talking to Steve uh, Franklin was and he said when you have a quarterback who can't or won't run and it was more than a little veiled thing and obviously Christian uh, you know, couldn't and really didn't want to. And I think it held part of the offense back. Well, and uh, Goon, this is something you can speak to. When, when you don't have a great offensive line, and, you know, we're trying to be delicate with the way we put I this, you, yeah. but when you have a mobile quarterback, that could help cover up some, some other issues. Huge. Right? I mean, look at you know, the last two great Penn State teams were quarterback by Michael Robinson and Daryl Clark. I mean, there's a whole added feature out there. A, 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 a necessary aspect of it is with the, the threat of a running quarterback because defense has got to be on their toes. I mean, you drop back for a pass, you know, you're in pass coverage, and you get a quarterback who can run for 40, 50 yards on you, you know, you, you, you better be ready to, to, to play against that. And, uh, you know, with Mark saying about Saquon going through, I mean, it's only going to help him. It's going to help the offensive line, obviously, but with the run game in general, a running quarterback, you know, that, that threat is great. And it wasn't just a quarterback who decided to take off. It was a quarterback that made the first down, uh, you know, with a move or a good finish to the run on, on several of those third downs. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the last time they had a quarterback with this sort of pocket presence. And that may be, uh, you know. Chuck maybe, Burkhart. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's, again, early in the season, he looked a little bit out of whack back there when guys were getting to him and causing fumbles, but now he's starting to step up in the pocket. And you know, I was saying to some folks in the press box, Trace McSorley's the guy who, if you're on the other team, you can't stand him. And I think Dave Jones of the Patriot News, he's like the Duke point guard, you know, that there, you can't figure out why he's good, but he's, he is good. He's getting it all done, and he just drives opponents absolutely nuts. And you could see that with Maryland. They had no idea what to do. When he ran for that touchdown right up the gut, they basically should have just thrown their hands up. Does, does that not show you, though, Keith, how the college and the pro game are so different that, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost in some ways two different sports when it comes to the quarterback position? Well, yeah, we talk about Christian being a, a stand-up quarterback, and, and that's the NFL. That's the yeah. NFL mold, a guy who can throw the ball 100 miles an hour, 100 yards. You know, in, in the college, uh, you know, it is great athletes playing quarterback who, you know, pose that threat and, you know, change defenses. Changes, they change games. You know what, I, Mark, you know, I talk about offensive line constantly, but, you know, watch him get tackled. Offensive linemen are running down the field trying to pick him up off the ground. I mean, they're playing for him. They're going to fight for him, so that gives you an idea of how much they respect his game. And, you know, the other thing on the quarterbacks, and I know we're showing Trace McSorley here, but it was nice to see Tommy Stevens get in there. And I thought, yeah, again, you're, you're in there at mop-up time, but he showed me a little bit of something. You know, I mean, he... he Obviously, he wasn't throwing a lot of passes, but boy, he was uh, quick and nimble and, and, and looked pretty good out there. Uh, it was too bad that that touchdown didn't stand up for the kid, but he looked good out there. You know, you mentioned him. offensive line. Uh, it was nice to see Paris Palmer, uh, you know, a guy who had really struggled last year and really was beaten out this year, step in and, and be serviceable after an uh, unfortunate injury again to Andrew Nelson. Yeah, it's tough for Nelson, too. I mean, your heart goes out to the kid. It looks like he's going to be out for the year. And, you know, the fact that they were able to plug in Paris Palmer, you know what, all the credit in the world to that guy, as you said. This was a guy that looked like we weren't really going to see him again, gets an opportunity, and plays well. I mean, I was half-joking. As soon as he went in the game, 
He was like, the, he turned things around for them. And I don't know that that's necessarily the case, but I think it also speaks to the fact that they are able to mask, mask some things with this offense, with the, with the offensive line. And I don't mean that in a negative way to work Paris Palmer. He came in and played well. All right. Well, we have reached the halfway point. The Nittany Lions will return and after a bye week, and we're going to take a look at uh, what we should expect and what they should focus on in these two weeks of practice. The Nitwits will be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, Dr. Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. Hi, my name is Wally Richardson, former Penn State quarterback, and you're watching the Nitwits. Six games in, Penn State heads into their bye week four and two and have two weeks to prepare for the Buckeyes. We'll talk Ohio State next week, but at the midway point, what are the major concerns with what you've seen or not seen? Well, I mean, they definitely have the injuries has been a cloud over the whole season. And I wanted to ask Keith, I mean, you see, what are the players talking about? This rash of injuries, is it something, and James touched on a little bit how they're going to kind of reevaluate it uh, here, but is it, is it, you know, are they being taxed too much in practice? Are they tired? Why, why do you, is it quirky? No, it's just a coincidence. I mean, okay. there's no doubt about it. It's some, some years you go through and have hardly any injuries, and some years it's just like this. You know, talking about uh, the injury and that, you know, we're, you know, Palmer's going to have to really step up with Nelson being out. I mean, that's a huge, huge loss for Penn State because he was the, you can tell he was the offensive line leader out there and he was playing great. I mean, he's been out there, you know, it's his third year playing right now and guys respect him, guys love him and he's playing and it's just, it's, you know, I hate seeing it. It's just like Wortman White, you know, getting hurt. You just hate seeing guys like that go down. You know, in the back of my head, I'm sitting there. I mean, remember a couple of years ago, uh, Nelson got carried off with, but it was just like a dislocated knee at that point. And he has, I guess he called a trick knee. And I, in the back of my heart, in my mind, like, I'm praying that, you know, that's what that was yesterday. But then when coach said, it, you know, it, 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 you know, it's like he's done. That's sad for the kid and bad for the team. But, you know, they've rallied around the injuries all year. I mean, they really have. So just got to step up, next man up. Yeah, they're going to have to do what they can to keep the, the rest of what they have healthy. I don't know. Um, you know, injury information is pretty scant whether we're going to see any of these linebackers get back through the open date. Well, I think the more interesting part to me was that he said they may have to reevaluate Will Fries, the offensive, the redshirting offensive lineman, a tackle who, you know, you go to practice and we've seen him at second team. Uh, you know, halfway through the season, this is, uh, is going to be a tough call for them whether to take somebody out. In terms of, uh, you know, who's going to be back, it was interesting that he said last week they thought they might have Cabinda back, and then there was some yeah. sort of setback there. Bell, to me, you know, he was on crutches a few weeks ago. If you could possibly start to get those guys back, then all of a sudden I think you're looking at a linebacker core that is – has more depth so you know this is definitely looking for that silver lining but some of these young guys have had an opportunity to step up we saw you know Brandon Smith right there some of these young guys have had the opportunity to step up and maybe that gives you some depth moving forward if they are able to get these guys back because I do think it would be important you know, especially at the linebacker spot. If they get a couple of those guys back, it'd be huge for them. Well, one more offensive line point, and Brendan knows I'll, I'll never blame the center. But, and I think Gaia has done a decent job at center, and especially as a leader, but he's got to refine some of these snaps. There's almost been uh, two or three per game that McSorley has had to lunge or leap or move uh, or make a best catch out of, and uh, in a close game, that could hurt you. Going back to the red shirting of a freshman, you know, you don't want to take a guy's red shirt in his seventh game because he sat for six games and now you're going to, you know, he's going to play five more games. But if that's what has to happen, it has to happen. I mean, he, he's, it's on, it's on the kid himself, but, you know, what, what kind of football player is going to say, well, you know, I want a red shirt. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. Of course they're going to sit there and say, I want to play, you know. So uh, it, it'll, it'll be a tough decision, and Mark's right, it'll be a very tough decision to see if they're going to redshirt or uh, let him play. Well, they were debating it with Bates last year. Whether exactly. it, and it yeah. ended up, you look at how it worked out for that what kid. A it's been team, a, yeah. yeah, it's been a good thing for him. And I'm sure, all things considered, they would have loved to have redshirted McGovern, even though he was an early enrollee. 
But, you know, Franklin was the one who said it. They may have to take a look at it. I'll be surprised if he comes out. I think they'll be able to make do with what they have moving forward. I but think they'll play Palmer unless it's a yeah. worst-case scenario, like, hey, we, we have to do it, you know. Yeah. I don't think they want to do it, but if they have to, they will. And whatever they have to do to shore up their tackling, um, I think that's got to be a point of emphasis in the second half. You know of the what? Season. But then we're sitting here talking about injuries, and you're saying, are they doing too much? So they're really doing thud tackling in practice every time that we've been there. I, 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 to me, I don't know how you figure this out. I don't, because I was the one who was saying they should be doing more tackling in practice. Yeah, and, and I believed you. Right, right. And then I'm the first one to say, well, then you start having guys go down with injuries. So I don't know what the solution. That, to me, that's going to be one of the most difficult things for them to figure out going into the second half of the season and in the bye week. Do you try to do more hitting? How can you do that when you have all these injuries? It's a it's, conundrum. It was, it was a tough six weeks right now. I mean, yeah. it, was a, it was a pretty, pretty taxing six weeks on these guys because there were so many guys who did play. Well-deserved rest for the guys. They'll have a couple days off this week, have the weekend off, and uh, you know, get back to it. All right, well, we're going to take our final time out, but when the Nitwits return, we're going to make some predictions on how the road looks from here on out for the Nittany Lions. We'll be right back. The Nitwits are brought to you by W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor specializing in distributing a full line of food service products to restaurants, schools, and institutions throughout central Pennsylvania. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. We now return to the Nitwits. A roundtable discussion of Penn State football. Six down, six to go. What's the predictions for the next six? Well, we watched uh, Michigan beat Rutgers 78-0. And I, I initially thought going to Rutgers at night, at Saturday night, might not be that automatic for Penn State, but it better be now. And Rutgers punted with a minute to go, down 78 nothing. I kind of got a kick out of that. I'm going to say 4-2, that they're going to find a way, um, you know, beat Iowa or Michigan State, and we'll see what happens in Indiana. Yeah, and I would agree. I think 4-2. and two. Uh, I also think we have to take a look at the way the Big Ten has kind of unfolded this year. Indiana, to me, is much better than I think any of us thought. Michigan State, who saw that coming? So I think if, as you take a look not just at Penn State, but at the rest of the Big Ten, 4-2, and two, very doable. I think 4-2 is very doable, possibly 5-1. and one. We have uh, Michigan State and Iowa, which are the two toss-up games, I think. But they're both at home with the home crowd late in the season. I think we uh, may pull them both out. Well, Michigan State will be after Thanksgiving, so that'll be a challenge for, uh, for the ticket. It always is. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I think going into the bye on a real upswing right now is the best-case scenario for them, particularly after the Michigan game. Well, and Keith, uh, I heard you had mentioned a couple weeks ago how big these last two games were before the bye. And the fact that they were able to win those moving forward, not just this season, but kind of yeah. moving on. Had they lost those two games? Boy, I'll tell you, it'd be a whole different narrative right now. But going in, great job by the coaching staff, great job by the players, setting a positive tone for the second half of the season. All right, and I'm thinking four and two as well. I said eight and four at the beginning mm -hmm. of the season, so I'm on track here. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Plus, you're the fingers. nitwit of the week, Alex. Uh, yeah, we thought well, we were going to slip know, out. We thought we were going to slip out. Even oh. a broken clock is right twice a day. Nice. Well, no bye week for us, but we will be joined by Penn State Director of Athletics Sandy Barber next weekend. We'll make our Ohio State predictions. We'll see you then. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, an independent firm and a firm foundation for your financial future. By Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Courtesy Motor Sales of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue, Altoona, just ask rental, buy what you want, rent what you need. By the Allegro where fine cuisine is a way of life. By Health South, your rehab choice. Health South Altoona, ask for us by name. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, uniform, and mat rentals. By Reed and Selene Orthodontics, 
Dr. Reed and Selaney provide orthodontics for children and adults. By W.S. Lee & Sons, your local food distributor specializing in distributing a full line of food service products to restaurants, schools, and institutions throughout central Pennsylvania. By EasyToUse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By FightOnState.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Sunday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.